people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. Challenging our resident quiz champions today are Bath Brouhaha. Now, Team Captain Dorian hosts a weekly quiz at the Bath Brewhouse pub and has handpicked a team from his regular quizzes to take on the Egghead. So it's a big moment. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Dorian and I'm a maths teacher. Hi, I'm Jane and I'm a Citizens Advice Volunteer Advisor. Hello, my name's Adam. I'm a freelance translator and supermarket assistant. Hi, I'm Barry and I'm a retired legal executive. Hello. I'm Sean, and I'm a stockbroking administrator. So Dorian and team, welcome. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. So tell us about Bath Brewhouse, Dorian. Uh, so it's a lovely little pub. I've been doing the quiz for a couple of years now. Been torturing all these fine folk over here, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Uh, but no, they seem to enjoy and I've picked my best quizzes. And I, see, I understand you are really fanatical about compiling the best questions. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have to do everything myself. I might use the germ of an idea, but all questions are my own. And they're, they're, a, bit, they're a bit weird, but I think they're used to it. And uh, tell us about the team and how you all got together. Are you do quiz against each other or with each other? Okay. That's the key thing. So I, I, I'm always winning because I'm the quiz master. But everyone else, yeah, they're my regulars and they, they often do very well. They've all been on winning teams at various points. Good luck to you, challengers. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our incoming team. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Bath Brouhaha, the Eggheads have won the last couple of games. They're getting into their stride. You've got to stop them. There's £3,000 if you do. Do you want to go for it? Yes, please. please. Yeah. Okay, the first head-to-head -head battle is on sport. <laughs> <laughs> is that good? I think, I think we would we, sacrifice Barry. Oh, sorry, yeah. Barry. Sorry, Barry. Oh, good. Good. Uh, not the first time we've seen Barry sacrifice in this studio. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like to take on? Okay. I think Chris, please. Yes. Ah, you do watch the programme. <laughs> <laughs> Barry from Bath Brouhaha, all the bees versus Chris, known as the locomotive. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions in the question room. So, Barry, good luck here against Chris, who has his moments on sport, don't you? I've been known to win the occasional sport round, Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. So, would you like to go first or second, Barry? First, please, Jeremy. Here we go. How many strides did Usain Bolt take when running the 100 metres final at the 2012 Olympics? 41, 81 or 121? I would think it's um, a small number, quite long strides. Probably not 121. I think I will say 41, please. 41 is correct. Well done. Crystal question. What is the length of the baseline in a game of doubles tennis? Is it 16 feet, 26 feet, or 36 feet? E. 16 feet, that's uh, half a bus. Well, same size court as a singles game anyway, so it's 26 feet. The length of the baseline in a game of doubles tennis, 26. So you've, you've worked that out going on buses, have you? I know you get lovely well, transport you, into things. Well, uh, but the idea that you could park a bus at the end of a court. Just about, yeah. How long is a bus? Depends what buses we're talking about. Talking right? about well, we, we know what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about an old fashioned route master. Well, an old fashioned route master, 27 foot 6 long. Okay. I'm sorry, Chris, it's wrong. It's 36 feet. Yeah. I guess because it's got the two tram lines on the yeah. sides on. Yeah. All right, Barry, this has started well. Chris has unaccountably brought in a bus and crashed. <laughs> Which Six Nations rugby union team secured its first test series win in Australia in June 2016? Wales, England or Ireland? I, I will try Ireland, please. Oh, Barry, uh, this was a big uh, story for England. England is the answer. Would you have got that, Chris? Probably on the percentages, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your question. In which year did Gary Lineker first play international football for England? Chris, was it 1976, 1980 or 1984? 76 seems a bit early. 84 seems a bit late. 
So I'll go for 1980. 1980 is your answer. Mm. Do you know eggheads? I, I think that the likelihood is it's 1984. 84 is right. You're ahead of Chris. Get this right, you're in the final round. After Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s retirement in 2015, who became the world's number one ranked pound-for-pound pound boxer according to The Ring magazine? Is it Saul Alvarez, Deontay Wilder, or Roman Gonzalez? Hmm, I must say I don't know any of those. Um, Roman Gonzalez, please. If you've got this right, you're in the final round. Do your teammates know? No, no, Dorian, no, no. are you not been setting questions on this? Uh, absolutely not, no. Well, you can have a picture of Roman Gonzalez on the wall because that is indeed the right answer. Oh, yeah. Well done, well done. Thank you, Barry. Chris, sorry you're not in the final round, and Barry, you are. Good start for our challenges. Please return to your teams. As it stands, Bath, Bruhaha have not lost any brains. The eggheads have lost one. The next subject is science. Um, Who would like this? Well, we agree that was me. Uh, that's 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 you. You. Okay. It's you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dorian, against which egghead would you... I won't even suggest one. Who would you like? Oh, I will take on the unknown quantity of Steve. Good stuff. So, Dorian, from Bath, Bruhaha, to play Steve, and to ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. Okay, science, Dorian, would you like to go first or second? Uh, first, please. And here is your first question on science, Dorian. Good luck. What term is often used to describe the pressing of a computer mouse button twice in quick succession? Is it double click, dual tap, or multi dab? Okay, I'm very fond of technology related questions in my quiz. That's double click. Double click is right. Well done. Steve, apitoxin is the scientific name for the venom produced by which creature? Jellyfish, honeybee, or snake? Well, the api makes me happy because I think it's a honeybee. Oh, api as in apiary, is that okay. right? Yeah. I see, clever you. Honeybee is right. One each. Back to you, Dorian. Siberian, European, and Japanese are species of which coniferous tree of the genus Larix? Oak, Norwegian spruce, or larch? Uh, could you spell the genus name? Yeah, L-A-R-I-X. I was not aware they had oaks around there. I've, ne I've never heard of a Japanese spruce, but there is a dedicated character for Larch, so I will guess Larch. Oh, there's a dedicated Japanese character yeah, for Larch. Don't ask what it is, I won't know. <laughs> no, but that's, that's very good quizzing. Larch is right. Steve, on to you. What is the name for the study of the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter? Is this chronoscopy, microscopy, or spectroscopy? Hmm. Well, just breaking down the words from the source, ignoring the scopy bit. Chronoscopy um, sounds more to do with time. Microscopy is obviously looking at small things. I've got to go with spectroscopy. Let's check with Barry. I'm very happy with that. Barry is happy. I'm happy. You got it right. Spectroscopy. To each. Dorian. Obtained from lichens of the same name, what colour is the dye or chill. Is it purple, yellow, or orange? O-R-C-H-I-L. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I've never heard of it. <laughs> but given it has a special name, it sounds like it might have been an old royal colour, so I will guess purple. <laughs> the answer is purple. Oh, oh excellent. <laughs> three out of three, well played. So far, you're, you're playing really well. Steve, to stay in, what symbol is used to denote Planck's constant? a physical constant used in quantum mechanics. Is it A, H or X? Well, the letter that was in my head has come up, which is always promising. Um, and I can't really try and reason it out other than I think I've read it, so I'll go for H. Any A kids? No, Barry will know. Spot on. H is right. Three each. This is a good round on science, isn't it? We go to sudden death. Dorian, it gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternative answers. For what does the first P stand in the abbreviation PPM, a measure of small levels of pollutants? Uh, oh, I believe that parts is in parts per million. You're quite right, parts it is. Steve, lamp black, it's all one word, a substance produced from the combustion of organic compounds and used as a pigment is an almost pure form of which element? Well, because it's black, and I know American footballers wear it to protect them from glare, 
I'd have to go carbon. Carbon is correct. Dorian, how many of the planets in our solar system are larger in diameter than Earth? Oh, heavens, okay. <laughs> well, I'm torn between two or three. I will try three. I, I learned to rhyme for this and I forgot it. Mercury, Mars, Venus, Earth, and the ones after are the key. Ah, okay. So, which are the ones after, uh, anyone? Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Four. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune is four. Ah, oh, no, okay. Okay, Steve, for the round. Horse, Pincher, and Oak Ox are nicknames for which UK insect that spends most of its life underground and emerges during the summer to find a mate? Um, I've very little to go on here, so I'm going to try and be use a bit of common sense, which has always been a bit of a failing. Um, because using the terms ox and horse, I'm thinking something, a, a large insect. So uh, I think probably the largest one we've got, whether it lives underground or not, I don't know. But I will try stag beetle with no real conviction at all. Latin name Lusana Servus, English name, you're right, Stag Beetle, well done. Yes. Well played on science, Steve, excellent, and Dorian, sorry, but he is clearly very good. Yeah, that was an excellent answer. As we're, as we're finding out. Would you got that, Dorian? Uh, no. Okay, very honest. So, come back to us and rejoin your teams, please, and we'll see what happens next. So, Bass, Bruhaha have now lost the brain, lost the skipper from the final round. The eggheads have lost one as well. And we play on with film and TV. So who'd like this? I think that's going to be Jane. Jane, 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 Jane yeah. okay. No our question. Citizens Advice Volunteer Advisor against which eggheads? Anybody? 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 Like uh, Judith, okay. I'm not sure. I think Judith. Uh huh. That's good, Judith, mm -hmm. isn't it? You like your films? Yes, I do. Judith once sat next to Gregory Peck at dinner. Ah, really? Is that your claim to fame? Seriously. <laughs> no, that's his claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Jane from Bath Brew, ha ha. Judith from the Eggheads, please go to our question room. Okay, film and TV, Jay, do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll go first, please. And here we go. Matthew McConaughey won an Oscar for his performance in which 2013 film? Is it The Wolf of Wall Street, A Time to Kill, or Dallas Buyers Club? Okay, I don't think it's The Wolf of Wall Street, because that was Leo thingy. I don't think it was the time to kill, so I think it was the Dallas Buyers Club. Have you seen it? Uh, yes. Yeah, me too. It's brilliant, isn't it? It was. Dallas Buyers Club is right. All right, your question, Judith. Who became one of the main co-presenters of the TV show This Morning in 2002? Piers Morgan, Chris Evans or Philip Schofield? Well, I don't... The trouble is, I don't watch it. Um, but I, I vaguely remember something in the papers about Piers Morgan. So I'm going to say Piers Morgan. You've fallen into error there. Uh -huh. Because he, he does co-present with the brilliant Susanna Reid on Good Morning Britain. Oh. But the, you'll know this, Jane. Philip Schofield. Philip Schofield. Oh. It was say, what's Good Morning then with Piers Morgan? That's the, that's the breakfast show. And this is the mid-morning show. Have you seen Jeremy Kyle? Oh, God, <laughs> yes. So you're ahead, Jane. Now known simply as Crime Watch, in which year was the BBC TV show Crime Watch UK first broadcast? 1984, 1994, or 2004? Okay, I th don't think it was as recent as 2004 or 1994, so I'm going to go for 1984. Yes, correct, 1984. Okay, Judith, your question. You need to get this one right, Judith. In which TV drama series did Martin Freeman play the role of the insurance salesman Lester Nygaard? Is it Mad Men, Fargo, or Dexter? Definitely not Mad Men, because I, I watched Mad Men from beginning to end. I don't know about the other two, though. Oh, dear. Let's try the magic, right? Dexter. Dexter is your answer. Now, I, let me just remind myself of who was, who was the star of Dexter. Uh, Michael C. Hall. That's right. Yeah, not Dexter, Judith. Fargo. Oh. Fargo, which was a movie and became a TV series, is the answer. Well done, Jane. Yeah. Very well done. Sure work of that. Yeah. Please come back to us and we will play the next round. 
Well, interesting game we've got here. Bath Bruhaha have lost a brain, but so far two eggheads have scored no points at all. So the position is a powerful one. This is a key moment now in the contest with geography. Oh. Who would like this? Yes, you, Adam. I, I think, yeah. Adam, 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 Adam. Okay, Adam, I'll our translator, it. against either Barry or Kevin. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Barry's more science. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Barry. Should we, should we yeah. do it? Should I go with Barry? Yeah. yeah. I, think, uh, I think against Barry, please, Jeremy. Uh, Adam from Bath Brouhaha against Barry. Please go to the question room and we'll play the last head-to-head. -head. So, Adam, I mentioned you are a translator. I am indeed, yeah. Uh, French to English, yeah. Okay, well, good luck in this round, Adam. And would you like to go first or second against Barry? I'd like to go first, please, Jeremy. <laughs> Last round before the final, here we go. Which French city lies on the Bay of Biscay, approximately 15 miles from the Spanish border? Marseille, Biarritz, or Toulon? Well, I'm pretty confident on, on my French geography. Uh, Marseille and Toulon are on the Mediterranean coast, and uh, Biarritz, it's, the answer is Biarritz. Biarritz is quite right. Barry, your question. Approximately how many miles separate mainland Russia and mainland Alaska at their closest points across the Bering Strait? Five, fifty-five, or five hundred and fifty-five? Well, I think the nearest point that America and Russia come together is on Diomede, that, that, <laughs> Diomede Islands. And I think they're only about five or six miles apart, so I'll have to go for five. Five? Which is why Sarah Palin said, I can see Putin from my house. Yes. Is that right? It is indeed. I'm sorry you're wrong. Oh. Oh. 55. As much as, I didn't think it was as much as that. I really didn't. We did specify mainland Russia and mainland Alaska. Ah. Yeah. The islands that are closer. No, I see what happened there. Ah. So we're having a really strange game here. There are, there's only ah. one egghead who's got a question right so far. <laughs> Okay, Adam, your question. Sultan Ahmed is a historic district of which city? Marrakesh, Tehran, or Istanbul? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not Tehran. Um, I'm just going by the Ottoman connection, because I'm, I'm fairly sure... Well, yeah, the Ottoman Empire was ruled by sultans. Just from that, I'm probably going to have to guess Istanbul, although I'm not 100% sure. Istanbul is correct. Nicely done. Okay, Barry, your question. Originally a minaret and later converted into a bell tower, the Giralda is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site in which Spanish city? Seville, Cartagena or Santander? I think the Giralda is uh, part of the cathedral in Seville. Seville is right, Barry. Well done. Okay, so the eggheads on the scoreboard here. But you can take it with this question. The active Arenal volcano is a tourist attraction in which country? Costa Rica, Honduras, or Nicaragua? Uh, they're all they're all incredibly close together in um, in Central America. There, of course. Um, pure on purely on the basis of nothing at all. I'm going to go for Costa Rica. <laughs> Barry, is he right? I think he is, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, you're right. Yes, three out of three. Yeah. Playing so well. Well done, Adam. Not to expect that. Language skills came in really handy there. Costa Rica's right. Barry's been knocked out. Wow. So, what a final in prospect here with only two eggheads playing. Please come back, rejoin your teammates, and we'll see what happens. So, this is what we've been playing towards, and who would have predicted this with the skipper on this side knocked out? It's time for the final round. As always, it's general knowledge, but I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, that is, surprisingly, Dorian from Bath Brouhaha, but also Barry, Judith, and Chris from the Eggheads. Would you please now leave the studio? Jane, Adam, Barry and Sean, you're playing with Dorian looking on to win Bath Brouhaha £3,000. Steve and Kevin, you're playing for something that money can't buy to just somehow shore up the Eggheads reputation here after a torrid time today. <laughs> As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time they're all general knowledge. You can confirm. So, Bath Brouhaha, the question is, can your four brains take down these two? Bath Brouhaha, would you like to go first or second? Here's your first question. What was the approximate turnout of eligible voters in the UK's 2016 EU referendum? 
52 percent or 72 percent? It's high. 52 or 72. It's high. 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 It's high with an estimated net worth of $75 billion. Is it Bill Gates, Carlos Slim, or Mark Zuckerberg? Well, I think um, it, for quite a long time, well, it, it Carlos was Carlos Slim, Slim but yeah. he's, he's dropped away yeah. for various reasons. I Indeed, think Bill Gates, is, who yeah. once was, has come yeah. back again. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Bill yeah. Gates, yeah. yeah. Uh, we think that's Bill Gates. <laughs> Three rich men. The answer is Bill Gates. Back to you. Yeah. So your question, which of these acts was a headline performer at the 2016 Glastonbury Festival? Oh, no. Rihanna, Adele, or Beyonce? Definitely Adele. Definitely Adele. Definitely Adele. Yeah. Definitely. Adele. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's Adele, Jeremy. Yeah. Adele's right. Well done, Sean and team. You're in the lead. Eggheads, which of these London landmarks was designed by the Italian architect Renzo Piano? The Shard, Olympic Stadium, or London Eye? Parks and Marfield, London I went. Yeah. I don't know yeah. the Olympic Stadium. Was. Oh, yeah, various people. Right. Olympic Stadium. Uh, we think that is Renzo Piano. Just a just Renzo to be cautious, Piano. Need, yeah, given some of the things that happened earlier. <laughs> uh, the Shard. The Shard is right. Two two. Your question: Which author won the 2015 Man Booker Prize for the novel A Brief History of Seven Killings? Tom McCarthy, Marlon James. Or Chigozi um, Obioma. I think it's Martin James. Okay, I have no it idea. It was a book about, um, he's a Jamaican bloke. It's about, uh, something to do with Bob Marley. If, sure. If, if, you, yeah. if you're, if you're sure. Are you sure? Go for it, Sean. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay. Um, not 100% sure, but we'll try Marlon James. Marlon James is your answer. Let's check with the eggheads, eggs. Yes, you've yeah, read it. That's right, yeah. You've read it? Is yeah. it good? Yeah, good. Well, 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 Marlon James well, is right. Well, then, Sean. So, eggheads, if you get this wrong, the contest is over and you've lost. A lot riding on this third question for you. The Pyramid of the Magician is a feature of which ancient city? Petra, Uxmal, or Persepolis? I don't think so, no. Um, but, I'm shown away from Petra. if it's a pyramid, well, I've never heard of pyramids being associated with either Petra or Persepolis, no, whereas Uxmal is a Mayan yeah city yeah and lots of these ancient mayan cities have got the pyramid of this the pyramid of that yeah etc etc and that's so i've got to this old for real I, I think well the percentage so, answer into percentage so, yeah. answer yeah we're not I, not heard of the actual don't think so anyway the actual structure itself jeremy but never associated pyramids with either petra or persepolis so we'll we'll say the uh, the mayan city of uxmal uxmal is your answer if you've got this wrong the contest is over Eggheads at the back, do you know? Oaksmal. Mm. Oaksmal is correct. Well done, Eggheads. Well done, Challengers. 3-3. Three, three. We go to sudden death. It gets a bit harder. I don't give you different options. Your first question. Here we go. As of July 2016, how many great-grandchildren does the Queen have? Okay, so that's Charlotte, George, Savannah, Isla. That's Peter Phillips. has got Savannah and Isla. Um, William and Kate have got Charlotte and George. Yeah, yeah. They've got, they've got, Harry yeah, they've got, got two. Harry has yeah. got Oh, right, okay. Um, Thingy, Princess Anne's daughter, has got one. So how many is that? Is that five altogether? Mm. So far. So, yeah, that's five so far, yeah. Um, right, anybody else has... Oh, I've so Prince Andrew... No, neither, um, neither Prince no. Andrew's... Um, daughters of Nor, Nor and Eugenie don't have any. Do Nor, they? They don't have Nor any. do any of Edwards. Okay, so that, that's those two. So that's those two out. So we just took out Charles and Anne. I think it's five. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, go I'm, with I'm, I'm happy to go with that. If you five? can't, okay. I can't think of any more. Yeah. No, I definitely can't. Can you think yeah. of any okay. more? As you can tell, okay. we're uh, we're racking on. Right? Yeah, we're, we're really not sure. Um, but yeah. it seems like uh, we're gonna go with five. Five is your answer. The correct number is five. Yes. Yes. Well done, Jay. Well done, Jay. Well done. Jay. Well done. Great well done. So, hey, kids, on the edge here. Who played the title role in the Quentin Tarantino film Django Unchained? Mm. Jamie Foxx. Yeah. So, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Jamie, Jamie yeah. Foxx. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was Jamie Foxx. 
Jamie Foxx is right with two X's. Okay, they made light work of that. Here's your question. The Brusilov Offensive, named after the Russian general Alexei Brusilov, took place during which war? I, I would, just off the top of my head, I would go for either World War II or perhaps the Crimean War. I would yeah. say Crimea, right. but I don't, I don't really know. know. I just have a feeling Crimea is a bit more of a gamble, but um, but then World War II is rather obvious, perhaps, mm. by the same token. I mean, is there anything else? Is there anything else? I haven't got There's nothing else. I, I can't. Mean, um, I can't. Could be not ringing any bells. Bruce. Um, oh, well, it could be. No, it could, could actually be World War One. Be. Um, I'd be more inclined to go Crimea because of that. Yeah, you. I don't you know. think the Crimean War. Well, I think that's, that's a possibility. Yeah. Because if it was World War Two, we might not need to have heard of that. I would have thought. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not. No, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going with whatever you go with. I think we're leaning towards Crimea, aren't Crimea. we? Crimean War. Okay. Try it. Yeah. 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 We'll go with that. Okay. Oh, uh, again, Jeremy. You can see we're not sure, but uh, we're going to try the Crimean War. Yep, so many wars to choose from. It was a major assault against the Eastern Front to relieve pressure on the Western and Italian fronts by drawing German forces east. It's World War One. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was World War One. World War One. So, in fairness, you were. It was not really one of your central options there. Okay, eggheads, you can take the contest with this question on sudden death. Which three-digit number is widely used as a fake area code when telephone numbers appear? in American movies. I'm not sure. I've, I've got an inkling. Yeah? But I'd, uh, for 555, five, but I'm not at all sure on that. Because I, I can't really... Mm. I can't even recall yeah. an eerie cut. I mean... Well, yeah. Right. But I, I may have it wrong entirely, but I, my, in my sort of immediate instinct... Yeah. Well, if it's your first is, thought, I'd say... But I really... I'm no, I'd, it's, well, it's, I don't know. It's tenuous. Know. Yeah. Should I... Yeah, I'll get on with it. No, we're, we're even know. Stevens yeah. if, if we don't. Not sure about this, Jeremy. I, I just have an inkling from a number of films, possibly. I don't know. I mean, 555 five, five is what's come to my mind, but it's, this may be entirely wrong. I don't know. And your answer is? 555. Five, five. 555 five, five is the answer. I'm just thinking that maybe Dorian knows this. Dorian? Uh, I have no idea, I'm afraid. Okay, thought it might be up your street. Anyone near here know? 555. Five, 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 five. Those two know. Yeah. We are. The three-digit number used as a fake area code in American movies quite often is 555. We say congratulations, eggheads, you have won. Now, the, did you know the question about the, the Brusilov offensive? Yeah, it, it was the 100th anniversary of it in 2016. It was June, so it was around just before the song. Well, we have seen a very good quiz today, and, and you played brilliantly, and I hope you've enjoyed it, which is 99% of the reason to come. So thank you very much. Brilliant. Yeah, thank great you. stuff. Well played. What a team Bath Brouhaha have been. The Eggheads have, well, you've done what normally comes maybe a little bit more naturally than it did today. You do reign supreme over Quizland. It means our challengers don't go home with the £3,000. So we'll take that money, roll it over to the next show. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the all-powerful Eggheads. £4,000 says they don't. Till then, goodbye.